I don't do that many Linux news videos. I would like to do more, but generally there's not really anything that I guess catches my interest. But even so, I still like to keep track of what's actually happening in the Linux sphere. And the problem with this is that I would say there is somewhere in the realm of thousands of Linux blogs and Linux news websites, and keeping track of them all individually is basically an impossible task. So what I find much easier to do is use some sort of Linux news aggregation service just to like filter down that list to a point where it's actually manageable. Now, when I say news aggregation service, I actually mean a news aggregator, not an RSS feed reader. I know that some people online refer to RSS feed readers as news aggregators. I do not understand why they are completely different things. So when I say news aggregator, I mean something that takes news from various different websites and then pulls them into one website. That's what I'm actually referring to, not an RSS feed reader. So what I want to talk about today was what my favorite news aggregation services are, specifically the Linux related ones and which ones I would actually recommend checking out. So some of the websites we're gonna check out today aren't entirely Linux related. Some of them will either have a Linux section and then the rest of the site will either be tech or in some cases it'll be, you know, gardening and finance and construction. And it will just be like a general news aggregation service, but we'll start with the ones that are specifically Linux related. So the first one we have is called Alexa. So LXER, I think it's, I think it's supposed to be pronounced Alexa, but anyway, this is Linux news. So if you don't know, if you've never used a news aggregation service like this, basically the way that it works is similar to something like say Reddit, where you have people joining the website and then submitting links that they find interesting on, you know, on some other website, like maybe OMG Ubuntu. And speaking of OMG Ubuntu, that is actually a pretty good reason to use a news aggregation service like this. So if you've ever looked at that website, most of the website is, hey, look, there's a new Ubuntu wallpaper. Hey, look, there's this random GNOME update. Hey, here's this other thing that you don't actually care about. So most of what comes out of OMG Ubuntu is kind of garbage. And this isn't a problem with just OMG Ubuntu. It's really a problem with every single news site out there. Most of what comes out of them is kind of garbage. But then from time to time, you'll have something interesting come out like, GitHub has their Arctic contributor badge, or the Linux kernel is deprecating the 80 character line limit, or just other things that are actually, you know, generally interesting. So the benefit of using a news aggregation service is you let other people go and actually find that stuff for you, and then you just come to this one place, and you can just see a filtered list of the news that's actually interesting. But that does produce a bit of a problem, and that is that if you only use one news aggregation service, you're going to be basically dealing with the bias of the users on that actual platform. Let's say on Alexa, they don't ever want to see news about, I don't know, Arch Linux, for example. Well, obviously, if the users don't like Arch Linux, you'll never see that news. So you should go to some other service. And I would recommend, if you're going to be using a news aggregation service like this, don't just use one of them, use a couple of different ones so you can kind of get a more general idea of what's actually happening in the Linux sphere. But anyway, I kind of went on a tangent there. Basically, this site is pretty basic and I'm not the biggest fan of it just because there's not that many users. So as you can see, we have a news article at 9.45 p.m. And then about an hour early, we had an article. Then an hour before that, there was an article. So on this site, you basically get an article once every hour, assuming there's someone around to actually post it. Some other services, they'll have much more fast moving news and you'll see a lot more actually happening, but this one doesn't seem to have that many users. So the number of posts that actually come through is kind of small, but if you just want, you know, some random Linux news, this isn't the worst place you can go to. The big problem this one has though, is it doesn't actually have sections. So you can't break it down to say, I just want to see news from the register on here and I want to see bashing data. If you want to do that, then you have to go to those websites and actually do it like that. But some of the other websites we'll look at, you can actually break it down into sections for, you know, IT management or it comes from this website, things like that. And that leads us into the second one, which is Linux Today. So Linux Today, basically it works in the exact same way. So people will submit links and you have this big list here. 
This one also is not super popular either, but you can also break this one down into sections. So let's say we want to just see developer news, for example, or we just want to see infrastructure news, or we just want to see IT management. It is nice that you can actually go and break this down into sections rather than being just, I guess, bombarded with this big list of stuff and maybe a lot of it you're not really going to care about. And if you use Twitter, you might as well go and actually follow the Linux Today account just because if you're going to be using Twitter anyway, you might as well actually make your feed have something productive in it rather than just yelling into the void about nothing. Now, the next one we have is linux.slash.org. Now, if you just came to slash.org, you might not even realize that there actually is a Linux section because up the top here under the topic section, we have devices, build, entertainment, technology, open source, science, and YRO. So let's just look at, say, the technology section. And as we'll see, there's stuff about Qualcomm, there's stuff about the Vatican, various other things that are happening in the technology sphere. But the Linux section isn't actually listed up here. But if we just go to, you know, linux.slash.org, that actually is a section. So I don't know why that's not listed under their topics. I'm not entirely sure. But this one, you can see we have stuff from like ZDNet, we have betanews.com, Silicon Republic, basically the same sort of stuff that we had before, but this site's also nice because if you want to see some stuff outside of Linux, you don't have to go to another website. You can just say, okay, well, I've seen enough Linux news for today. Maybe I want to go see some open source news, or maybe I want to go see some science news or something like that. You don't have to go to a different website just to see this same information. So if you are looking for a site that is really good for Linux news, but is also really good for a lot of other news as well, I would recommend coming to something like alltop.com. And for the Linux section, you want to go to slash Linux. So the way that this one works is actually very, very different from the other ones we looked at. So with Alexa, this is based on user submissions. With Linux today, this is also user submissions. And then slash dot, I didn't mention this earlier, but this one is also user submissions. But all top is basically done automatically. So as we can see, we have a Linux.com section. We have a Linux journal section. We have Linux Academy blog, Softpedia, so on and so forth. And basically what's happening here is it's pulling in every single post that gets made to one of these websites. So this right here is every single post that gets made to r slash Linux. Now there's not really much being shown here because it only shows the latest five results, but you still get the point. Basically all of this is being done automatically. So you're getting everything that's actually getting posted to these websites. So if you want, I guess, it's still filtered by the actual service the news is coming from, but if you want a less filtered look at it by just pulling in everything that comes from those services, this might be a good place to go to. And I did say we can get a lot of other news here as well. So if we want, say, I don't know, politics news, give that a second to load up. Sometimes this site can be a little bit slow. Uh, or we can say we want something like, I don't know, health news or we want fitness news. This will eventually load, but for some reason the site is just being really slow today. Let's just go back to the homepage. Okay, there we go, now it's actually loaded. So under politics, we have things like New York Times, Politico, The Atlantic, factcheck.org. You can see there is an obvious political bent to this one, but that's for another video. If we go under the health section, we have things like WebMD, Harvard Health, so on and so forth. Fitness, you have all of this stuff here. And then on the homepage, Basically, it's just going to show you the most popular sites for this website. So obviously, it's not going to be a perfect website because the creators of the website can pick and choose where they want the news to actually come from. But as I've been saying earlier in the video, this is why you want to grab your news from multiple different sources. So even if you are going to use an aggregation service, make sure that you're using more than one. So that leads us into my favorite Linux news aggregation service, which is this one right here, which is Tux URLs. Now there's a couple of reasons why I love this site. The first one is that every single one of the sections is color coded, which honestly makes it so much easier to find everything you want to find. So for example, if you want to say, look at Reddit, we always know that Reddit is going to be this fluorescent orange tab right here. Or we want to look at something like, uh, Pharonix, it'll be this green tab right here. Or if you want to look at Slashdot, it'll be this tab right here. It's just really easy to spot what's actually happening on this website. The other thing I like is let's say we want to look at the Reddit tab. As you can see, it's not just showing the five latest posts. In fact, it's actually showing 15 posts. 
So let's say instead of looking at these 15, we just want to see what was posted today on something like lobsters. So if we just click on today, that will then filter everything else out and just list out what was today. But let's say instead of that, we wanted to see everything that was posted on r slash Linux in the past month, for example. And we click on that and now we have 343 articles loaded and we can just keep scrolling for quite a while. Or if we go to Stack Exchange, let's say we want to see everything that was posted in the past week. As you can see, that will then filter that down to the last week. And you might have spotted that just before, but the other reason why I love this service is this right here. So apparently I'm considered news. I, I don't know why I'm considered news, but so is DT and Luke Smith, which most of the other Linux news aggregation services, they might include blogs, but I haven't actually seen one include YouTubers. It's cool that it's there. I don't know why. I wouldn't consider myself news, but hey, if you, if you want to see a feed of my videos, then it's on this website. But besides this, we'll also have a couple of blogs. So for example, there is Brian Lunduk's blog, uh, Jesse Frazzle's blog, and Michael Stapleberg. I have no idea who these people are. I know who Lunduk is, but that's the only one of the three. So I actually really like this service. The color coding is nice. Being able to filter by the actual dates of the news is really nice. And it's awesome that I'm considered news. Now, outside of these websites, there's a couple of other things I do want to mention. I am not a big fan of Reddit, but there are a couple of subreddits that are tolerable if you ignore the comments. So, r slash Linux is generally pretty good for general Linux news because they will just go and delete posts that are help posts. If you go and ask for support on the r slash Linux subreddit, you will get your post deleted. So most of the time, what you'll see on there is either people praising Linux, and when it's not people praising Linux, it's usually going to be some sort of Linux news. If you go over to r slash Ubuntu, or really any of the distro subreddits, r slash Ubuntu is just the one that is the most popular. You'll occasionally see general Linux news on there. Most of the news is going to be specifically relating to Ubuntu. But sometimes you'll see things related to, say, Proton or related to... I actually saw the 80 character line limit on that subreddit as well. So it wasn't just on some of the news aggregation services. I did also see that on Reddit. So occasionally r slash Ubuntu will actually get some reasonable news on it. And the same is true for r slash Arch Linux. Void and Gen2, from what I see, are mainly you know, support subreddits, but occasionally news will pop up there as well. As for any other subreddits, I would suggest avoiding them. Maybe there's something else out there that's really good for Linux news. I don't know what it is though. Most of what I see is kind of garbage. And I do want to make one honorable mention. So that honorable mention is Hacker News. Now Hacker News is mainly just general tech but occasionally you'll see Linux stories pop up on here, obviously because Linux is going to be popular in the hacker space. So I just wanted to mention this site as a good site for just general tech. It's not great for Linux, but I have seen some really, really good Linux stories pop up here. Very rarely, but sometimes it does actually happen. Obviously taking this approach to collecting your news, you will end up missing out on a lot of stories, but you'll get the general idea of what's actually happening. Anything that's really important is bound to show up on one of these services, especially if you use all of them. If you use, what, I, how many did I mention? Five or six? Uh, I mentioned five of them plus the subreddits. So if you go on all of those, you are bound to find pretty much everything that's actually important that's happening in the Linux sphere. So. This is how I like to get my news. If you have a better way to do it, then feel free to let me know down below. I'm happy to try something new out, but this seems to be the easiest way to get a general idea about what's actually happening. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Craig, Nathan, Andrew Monster, Corbinian, Peter D. Road, Tony Donald, John, Mikkel, Spagin, Thais, and Zilva. If you want to go support the channel, there'll be some links down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel or anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also, you can go check out my podcast. That is Tech of a Tea available on Library, YouTube, and a bunch of other platforms as well. And the audio version is available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, you can go check out this channel available on Library, 
BitTube, BitChute, and some other platforms as well. And remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. As always, I'm also blogging on read.cash and minds. I almost forgot what the website was called. I don't post super often and I have no schedule for it. So it's going to be kind of random when something goes up. But if you do like the rambly content, then go check those out because it's just the video format in text. Pretty much that's what it is. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.